Hi, everyone. This is International Master Mark Deason bringing you another installment of our weekly series. The subject of today's lecture is winning with the Stonewall Attack. Uh, the Stonewall Attack can be a very potent opening for white, very effective opening for white. Uh, requires not so much book knowledge and uh, can result in some relatively easy victories. And I wanted to go over some examples with you. My students have experienced this as well, so uh, I thought it would be highly useful to bring it bring it to the attention of uh, the viewers. But the game we're going to be reviewing today is uh, Santa Sierra versus Welsh. Uh, it's just a, an example of a quick win with a stonewall attack. Uh, okay, we start out with the what we're talking about is queen pawn openings. For those who are into ECO codes, it's D00. Now, the, the two moves we like to just really set up the stonewall attack and make it super potent are when black plays E6 and D5. When we see those two pawn moves, we know that the, the stonewall attack is a very, very viable system for white. And I should point out there is a stonewall Dutch. Black can play the same formation as well. Uh, but he'll be at, at the tempo down, so uh, there's a difference there. But what we're talking about here is an opening for white, the stonewall attack. But I'm pointing out to you that uh, the opening reaches its maximum effectiveness when we see these two black pawn moves. Okay. The game continues with d5, so we see one of the pawn moves. And then we see E3, which is sort of a Kale opening. And then we see E6. So now we're seeing the two pawn moves that signal to us that the uh, Stonewall attack may be a useful way to go. So White continues in uh, Kale fashion. He doesn't really commit himself yet. And now, ironically, if Black played F5, Black would have a adopt the stonewall formation. In this particular game, black played knight f6. And a lot of my, many of my student games uh, are, go along lines of something like this. Now, there's various flavors of Kale. This is a Kale opening. It's a subcategory of the Kale opening, the uh, stonewall attack. But after knight f6, the stonewall variety is to play f4. Uh, for those of you who are interested in the other ones, there's the Koltanowski system, which features knight f3 and c3. And then there's the Zuckertort flavor, which features knight f3 and b3, to fianchetto of the bishop. But the third choice is the Stonewall variety. And uh, it's, it's interesting, there's a book written... Uh, about how to beat Fritz, and it, uh, I think it, I believe it talks about uh, uh, using some kind of stonewall structures <laughs> to defeat Fritz. Uh, the Fritz, you know, doesn't understand. Uh, this was many a few years back, but uh, that Fritz doesn't understand these kind of positions. And the fact of the matter is, it. it they're just diff playing difficult positions. Uh, the, the problem is the white the white bishop on d3 is, is such a powerhouse, and the possibility of a knight achieving an outpost on e5 is so real that uh, in many cases white can win a, achieve a quick victory if black is not aware of those considerations. So let's let's just continue on with our game. Five. So white plays c3. If there were to be a capture on d4, he would capture with the e pawn, and that would achieve greater mobility for the bishop on c1. Now black just continues with routine development, and this is this is what we see so often in the Stonewall. Uh, black just develops, thinking there's no big problem. These are the moves of the game. Black develops thinking there's no big problem, but 
uh, in fact, there really is quite a big problem. Uh, white has a, uh, a powerhouse minor piece on D3. White is going to achieve another powerhouse minor piece on E5, and uh, the game almost just wins itself. And I've, I, once again, uh, my, many of my students have uh, come to grief against this opening. So it's uh, it's being taught apparently by many coaches. <laughs> uh, black plays b6, which is a good idea to to, to get something going with the uh, bishop on c8. Of course, it would be even even better to exchange off the one of the uh, pride and joys of the stone walls. It's the powerhouse bishop on d3. Then we see knight e5. And, and here, herein lies the dilemma. If black exchanges, white simply takes with the f-pawn, and that leads to a very powerful, or possible powerful attack on the f-file. It would increase the activity of the white rook, which will soon be on f-1. So that's, that's kind of the, the typical stonewall dilemma. But this is an example where black is not really putting up any now, Black's just playing normal moves here, normal developing moves, and then we now we see a typical move by White, Queen F3. Uh, that that completely prevents Knight E4, and it also uh, it may signify a Queen transfer to H3 in the near future, or White may adopt a, a pawn storm attack. We'll have to see how the game develops, but. Uh, if I were white here, I would be very happy with the position uh, because uh, it's very easy to lose in just a few moves with black, and that's exactly what happened in the game. Black castles. So again, black is making seemingly reasonable moves, but he hasn't done anything spectacular. And we see the pawn structure of uh, e6 and d5, which... Uh, to me, signifies that the Stonewall attack is at its more, most virulent form. And the Stonewall, of course, is, is this pawn formation here, it's, and it's a sub variation of the Kali system, which is a queen's pawn opening. Okay. And now, white is white is so encouraged with this position that that black is really not threatening anything. That white just goes for g4 right away. Uh, white doesn't even bother with queen h3, he just goes for an immediate pawn storm. So black trades on d4, and white takes with the e-pawn, that's the preferred capture in terms of pawn structure, lends greater activity to the bishop on c1, 